Hello everyone. In today's class, I'll be discussing about the traffic engineering. So before going into traffic engineering, let us know what is traffic engineering. So traffic engineering, it deals with the planning, geometric design of streets, highways and abutting lands and traffic operations as their use is related to the safe, efficient, economic and convenient movement of persons and goods. This is meant by traffic engineering. So there are many scope of traffic engineering and importance of traffic engineering like uh, uh, the techniques are used to achieve the safe and efficient movement of people and goods. It manages the traffic density by limiting the rate that vehicles enter the highway during peak periods can keep both speeds and lane flows at bottlenecks heights. There are many importance and scope of traffic engineering. Talking about the fu functions of a traffic engineer. So the basic function of a traffic engineer, it includes collection, analysis, and interpretation of data pertaining to traffic, traffic and transportation planning, traffic design, measures for operation of traffic, and administration. Talking about the road user characteristics, there are four basic uh, road user characteristics, physiological, psychological, mental characteristics, and environmental characteristics. First one is the physiological characteristics. So the physical characters of the road users may be either permanent or temporary. There are two types, vision and hearing. Vision is one of the most important factors that affects almost all aspects of highway design and safety. Hearing is an uh, aid that road user which can at some times be very important. The sound of horn or the sound of the nearing vehicle itself can alert a pedestrian to safety. So defective hearing is however not a very serious handicap. So elderly persons with failing eyesight can perceive better through hearing than through seeing. So this is about the physiological characteristics. Psychological characteristics, PIEV theory, which is important. So P perception, I intellection, E for emotion, V for valuation. So what is this PIEV theory? The reaction to traffic situations depends on the time required to perceive and understand the traffic situation and to take the appropriate action that time is called as total reaction time. The total reaction time of the driver is taken as 2.5 seconds. So what is this perception? What is this total reaction time? So perception, it is a time required for the CPIEV. Perception is the total time required for the sensation received by the eyes or ears of the driver to be transmitted to the brain through nervous system. This is the nervous system. So that is the sensation received by the eyes or ears of the driver to be transmitted to the brain through the nervous system. I is the intellection time, time required for the driver to understand the situation. Emotion time elapsed during emotional sensations and other mental disturbance such as fear, anger, or any other emotional feelings. Valuation is time taken by the driver for the final response. So the total time taken for this PIV theory is 2.5 seconds. This is one of the road user characteristics. And the next one is a mental characteristics. Mental characteristics is nothing but knowledge of vehicle characteristics, traffic behavior, the important mental characteristics of road user like knowledge, skill, intelligence, experience, literacy. Whether the person is educated or not, he knows the traffic signals or not. That is, that is about the mental characteristics. Next is the environmental characteristics. So environmental characteristics mainly depend upon the road user features, atmospheric conditions, locality and traffic stream characteristics. So next is the vehicular characteristics. So it's, uh, this is quite important to study the various vehicular characteristics which affect the design of the road facilities and traffic performance thereon. The various vehicular characteristics like 
vehicle dimensions, weight of loaded vehicles, power, speed of vehicle, braking characteristics of track. So vehicle dimensions, the uh, maximum width of the vehicle is taken as 2.5 meter. Maximum height is 4.75 meter. Maximum length is 18 meter. Weight of loaded vehicles, power of power of vehicle. In this power of vehicle, rolling resistance, grade resistance, inertial force, air resistance, transmission, losses. So in rolling resistance, there are different formulas which are not much important. And next is the speed of the vehicle. So the speed of the vehicle affects the design of side distances, super elevation, length of transition curve, design gradient, capacity of traffic lane, etc. Next, braking characteristics. The deceleration and braking characteristics of vehicles depend on the design and type of braking system and its efficiency. So off track, off tracking. So the difference in distance between curved wheels path of a particular set of front and rear vehicles is called as off tracking. Depends on the length of wheelbase, radius of horizontal curve. This is about the vehicular characteristics. Next is the fundamentals of traffic flow. There are uh, three main fundamentals, speed, which is given by V, flow, Q, density, K. The relationship between this speed, flow, and density, V is equal to Q by K. And density is equal to 1000 by S. Q is equal to 3600 by H. This is vehicle R per kilometer and this is vehicle R per hour. So derived characteristics, there are some definitions. Time means speed, space means speed, space, headway, time, headway, gap. So gap is the difference between the two, length between the two vehicles. That is gap. Spacing head, headway. Spacing headway, yes, it's a distance between the front of successive vehicles. Front of successive vehicles. It is measured in meters. Time headway, it's a time interval between the passage of the front of successive vehicles at a specified point. It is measured in seconds. Time mean speed is defined as the average speed of all vehicles passing a point on a highway over some specified time period. Space mean speed is defined as average speed of all the vehicles occupying a given section of the highway over some specified time period. This is about the relation between K, Q, V, S is the space headway, which is given here, Q, H is the time headway. Next, traffic surveys. So traffic surveys, again, there are different uh, traffic surveys like uh, spot speed studies, and uh, speed and delay studies, traffic volume studies, origin and destination studies, parking studies, accidental study, uh, studies. So why is traffic surveys required? As to carry it out for collecting traffic data or called as traffic surveys, uh, to analyze the traffic characteristics and their movements along the identify routes. So objective of this traffic survey is planning and designing of traffic facilities, determining the need for traffic control devices, so these are the types of traffic surveys, whatever I told you. So next. Uh, these two spot speed studies, speed and delay studies are the types of speed surveys. So what is spot speed surveys? Each and everyone detailedly will study. What is spot speed surveys? So spot speed surveys is nothing but what is the objective or uh, uses of spot speed studies is to plan traffic regulations and control measures, to design or redesign of various geometric elements, to find the speed trends with respect to last several years, to determine problems of congestion on roads and relative capacity, to conduct before and after improvement studies. The measurement of spot speed surveys is a direct timing procedure, NO scope, pressure contact cubes, radar speed meter, photographic meet method. So how do you measure the spot speed surveys? It's a very simple, simplest method. Two reference points are marked on the pavement at a suitable distance apart, and an observer starts and stop and accurate stop watch as a vehicle cross these two marks. 
This is direct timing procedure. Enoscope is one of the mirror type procedure. Pressure contact tubes, uh, they, they, uh, this pneumatic tubes laid across the carriageway act as detectors when a vehicle passes over them. The air impulses are sent to electromagnetically controlled stopwatch in the hands of the observer, starting the time at this first reference point and stopping it at the second. Next, radar speed meter, photographic method. Next one is a speed and uh, delay studies. So speed and uh, delay studies. In the speed and delay studies, there are again different methods to calculate the uh, the speed and delay studies. One is a floating car method or a moving observer or a riding check method. License plate or vehicle number. Interview elevated observer method. So this is about the speed and delay studies. The use of this speed and delay studies is to evaluate congestion capacity of the roads, to evaluate level of service and the need for improvements, to carry out trip assignment in transportation planning studies, this is about the speed and delay studies in the traffic volume method. So in the traffic volume method, the traffic volume is calculated manually, mechanical, all volume count at intersections. The count of the traffic is done. That is known as a traffic, uh, traffic volume surveys. So why is this done as to decide the priority for improvement and upgradation of roads? for geometric design and redesign of roadway facilities, for computing roadway capacities, for planning one-way streets and other regulatory measures. So, and this uh, design hourly traffic volume, the presentation of this traffic volume data is given by design hourly traffic volume. It is a plot, it's a graph between the hourly volume and number of hours in a year that traffic volume is exceeded. So every 30th hour, highest hourly volume is generally taken as design hourly volume, this is important. And my passenger car unit, the flow of traffic with unrestricted mixing of different vehicle classes on the roadways forms a heterogeneous traffic flow or the mixed traffic flow. This is about the PCU, passenger car unit per hour. Next, origin and destination studies. So in origin and destination studies, uh, give information on the actual location or zone of origin of traffic, travel of vehicles or individual passenger trips and the destination. The different methods are license plate method, written postcard, home interview method. Next is the parking sur survey, on-street parking surveys and off-street parking. So off street, uh, so on street and off street. So on street or curb parking, uh, there are parallel parking, angular parking, and off street parking, surface parking lots, multi storied parking garages. This is about the off street parking studies. And uh, level of services for high rural highways and uh, urban roads are also considered. This is about the important uh top topics which are covered in the traffic engineering and the next class i'll be discussing about the question paper questions which are asked on traffic engineering uh thank you